Hey guys, well, I'm uh, here at the courthouse waiting on our turn to go into the zoning meeting. The noise that you hear is the crowd in the hallway waiting to go into the hearing room where there's already a crowd, and I think they're mostly here for us. Although, right before us, there's a guy wanting to rezone his land for dangerous and wild animals. So some of them may be here for that, we haven't, they haven't called that hearing yet. But we may be here for a while if all them people, and that's not all of them, that's a little piece of them. But there's lots of folks out here, and nobody's come up yet and said, hey Doug, we're for you, I'm on your side. So we'll see how it's going to go. Anyway, uh, we've already talked to the local paper. The TV station is here for Kansas City, a big one. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, more in a minute. Accessible and one of the three must be at least being accessible. 
Therefore, it's a staff recommendation that the rezoning from C3 to R-SDM with PUD overlay be tabled due to the absence of an approved traffic impact study and adequate public services for water and sanitary sewer. However, if the planning zoning commission votes to approve, staff recommends the following conditions under Exhibit A. And I won't go into further detail on the conditions in this Thank you. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to open up this discussion with staff. Uh, it seems like we're missing some pretty core elements to even make a decision here. We've got the sanitary issues, we've got the water issues, we've got the or fire issues, um, traffic impact study. Traffic impact study. Um, I'm just trying to decide if each as a commission should decide to do this now as opposed to later. I don't see how we can make a decision based on the information that we have. So I'm going to throw that out to the commission for discussion. I'm going to inter you know, inter stick my nose in a little bit here. Something to uh, consider, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, if we table, if we vote to table this and there is um, additional reports and information that are in. Anyone who testifies tonight um, can make a can argue want to come back and speak to whatever that report is. So it kind of presents, uh, I'll tell you, it kind of presents a kind of fairness of process uh, consideration. Uh, so we'll, we'll be tabled, there will be additional information. Uh, people who testify tonight uh, may want to come back and testify again. So we can end up.
what other groups and other places are doing all over, which is human waste compost. They assured me in 45 days they would have an answer for us and were excited about the idea of processing on site and understood the science of it. Uh, okay, but that was months ago. They finally came back and said, you need to hire an engineer to do, all, to do a study and then we'll take a look at that. So we're in conversation with uh, SK, what's her name? SK. SKW. Um, I was hoping to hear, uh, get a phone call back today, but we're going to be working with them. Now, uh, there's been a lot of misinformation about us as a group. Uh, uh, um, we had a couple of open houses, people came. One gentleman asked us how we were a benefit to the community when we were going to have guys with guns at the front gate. Okay, we don't have guns, don't like guns, don't want any. Back you up. Let's try to stay to the land use sure. uh, issues. Well, and that's, that we have tried to ask for some things uh, like rainwater harvesting, like rainwater recycling, like human waste composting, that the Peace Corps, that other groups teach all over the world, that are accepted science, that are so far against the mainstream that it's freaking people out. Now, we did not ever intend to do those things without permission. We have gone to the appropriate bodies, we are asking the right questions. Uh, in some cases, they're dragging their feet. Um, the traffic study didn't come up until maybe three weeks ago, after we'd already submitted the application. Um, the water department, uh, that one didn't come up until two or three weeks ago. You ask for the moon, they tailor it back, you get what you wanted anyway. Okay. The seltzer expressed some of their concerns, uh, like, um, was it okay to build on top of the cave? Okay, well that corner was selected because it's not on top of the cave. But we did pay for an engineering study. They did look at the cave. They found that the cave would be perfectly okay for residential use as far as they were concerned. And that it was okay for us to build the kind of buildings we're talking about on top of the cave. The engineering report that Matt has, which I presume is forwarded to Excelsior to whoever, um, said clearly that we could build in farther back where it's a little <coughs> old quarry road. Um, but then we have trouble with roads, fire hydrants, electricity, and whatever else. So because that uh, was a, a corner that was not going to be used commercially, it didn't disrupt the C3 zoning of the rest of the property, it was accessible to the road, the decision was made to, to, to plant it on that corner. Uh, we've moved uh, buffers farther from the road uh, where there's more vegetation. We don't believe that you'd even see it from the ballpark or from Old Quarry Road. This is not, and I've said over and over and over, this is not a homeless shelter, this is not a rehab, this is a church. We believe that the church is best lived out residentially. Uh, we have said from the beginning that the zoning is problematic because there's nothing in the zoning code that allows for a monastery, a convent, even a parsonage alongside the church. There's no concept in the zoning code of a residential, uh, a religious group of people living together. And yet we believe firmly that that is the, that is the best, uh, for us anyway, not that everybody needs to do it that way, but that church lived out residentially, uh, as groups in the past have done, as over a thousand intentional Christian communities around the world do, that, that faith is best lived out together daily, working together, worshiping together, and so on. Uh, the question of whether or not we're going to use that piece of property is, is moot. We're buying the property. The question of us having a church there is not an issue here either. We are going to be using it for a church. We're going to be using it for a farm. It's just a matter of whether we have people living there, working the farm, and uh, participating together in all of the, the projects that we do on that property. I'm sorry for submitting an incomplete application. I'm sorry for the folks that uh, maybe want to come back and have their say later. Uh, we are, we have the Excelsior Creek sewers running through our property right along the creek line uh, from Old Quarry Road down to the, uh, to the west. Um, it may be from the zoning code that we have no choice but to connect to the sewers. If that's the case, that's fine. It, it, the, the point was not to try to get around anything. The point was to see how we can do this in the most ecologically friendly possible way. 31% of all the drinking water in this country is flush. Okay, we're gonna to continue to have a problem processing drinking water and, and, and generating more drinking water when we keep flushing it. Okay, there are solutions to that. 
even the green building code that, I don't know if this body was included on it, but, but shows that dry toilets or composting toilets are one of the possible solutions to that. Um, it's not uh, dumping sewage on the ground. Uh, it is very much using what is a resource, scientifically processing it, making sure that it's safe. For two years, it, it sits and processes a compost before it goes back out into agricultural elements, not into the garden and other things. But it's safe and is an accepted practice in lots of places. There's videos on the website about that. I encourage you to watch. If through this process we have an opportunity to educate folks about how to live more simply, about how to um, be happy with a smaller house, about how to live more ecologically, then uh, that's great. Um, I wish it wasn't so hard, and I wish it didn't feel like we were swimming upstream against so many people. I don't think that the density, uh, the neighborhood directly south of us, you can fit 31. I took a, that triangle and overlaid it on that neighborhood, and you can fit 31 single family homes in the neighborhood directly to our south in that triangle. Um, and that's without even engineering them and designing them to fit, just overlaying that triangle on that neighborhood. And those are two car garage with big roads, single family homes. We're talking about small cabins and um, buildings that are designed to hit the emerald level on the green building code that, that you all put into place, which nobody in Clay County has done so far. We want it to be a place for teaching and training, a big place for prayer, a place where people would come and learn. We have people that come from all over the world to see what we're doing. We think that we're a benefit. We've been a good neighbor in Liberty. Uh, whatever gossip or slander or whatever said about us, we've distributed four million pounds of food. We've taken in lots of people that nobody else would take in. And uh, um, anyway, I, I uh, expect that one way or another we're going to satisfy you sooner or later with uh, traffic and sewage and, and whatever. And, and we submit to whatever rules we're going to have to submit to. That's not the point. But um, we're asking for some unusual things and it's taking a little longer than normal for everybody to get their head around it. But if you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you. I'm going to speak for the commission. I mean, I applaud you for the dream, the, you know, the development. But again, we still have to make sure that the science, you, you mentioned it, the science, safety. We have to make sure that what you're doing is scientifically right from an engineering standpoint and will keep your people safe, as well as people downstream from it. Sure. Um, I've worked on projects. Civil engineer in which I thought we built a large reservoir so that they could take human waste and actually put it out of the property. So that's not <coughs> that unusual. Um, people are doing people in this are doing that. Um, but we just gotta make sure that what you're doing is right mm -hmm. from an engineering standpoint, from a public health and safety standpoint. So that's why we require the traffic studies, all these other things, we've got to make sure. Yeah, but and I'm not good. fussing about any of that, except that some of those we didn't know that we needed until after we'd already submitted the application. Now these are pretty basic things that we look at every month, um, sure. so I don't know what happened if there's a communication gap there, but everyone else that's come through here typically has those boxes checked by the time they get to this point. Well, so, we had hoped to have resolution from the Department of Natural Resources by now, and they had told us that they would have answers, and their answer was, hire an engineer, have him tell us it's okay. And that may be where it will, because you're doing something out of the ordinary, sure. it's going to require an engineer that specializes in that kind of thing. But the goal was never to get around health and safety. It wasn't at all. The, the goal was to ask for as much as we could, and, and, and prove the science if we need to, and then see what the codes of the different governmental bodies will allow us to do. Um, there, there's an eco-village up near Kirksville in Rutledge, Missouri, that does 100% human composting, human waste composting for 20 years. And they're in a county specifically that they chose because there's no zoning, there's no, there's no building codes, they can build hay bale, they can build tire houses, they can build all kinds of stuff, and they're safe, they've never had a problem, uh, but they don't have the same kind of oversight. We recognize that by choosing here, that we need to submit to you guys. Um, um, anyway, so I expect that in the next month or two we're gonna get the, the results of the studies that you're asking for and satisfy uh, those concerns. Great, glad to hear that. Any questions, comments?
In your planning, have you uh, had anybody take a look at the International Building Codes and study those and refer to the, your construction methods with those in mind? We, we, that's part of the engineering that has yet to be done, which is to look at our specific buildings and see whether they are okay to be built the way that we designed them or what changes need to be made to our designs. Uh, we have tried to be a little bit vague about uh, the specific cabin or the specific shape. We know that that's about the footprint we want, um, but we, we know that engineers are going to have to sign off on anything uh, before we submit it to KIPP and the building uh, inspection process goes through. So, and, and my understanding was that the actual uh, the actual engineering on the actual building uh, didn't need to be done at this at, at this moment on those. But we're not building anything until an engineer signs off on it. If you enter the county, there's signs all over the place that said you need to contact the, the uh, planning department to understand the like, right piece of property, to understand the zoning, and we just want to be sure that you understand that you might be buying a piece of property that is zoned for. We've already uh, worked that deal out. So we're going to be on this property regardless. This is not a contingency. Um, we were already renting space in a cave down in the Rush Street properties. Um, it, this property is a, a few hundred dollars more a month than the rent we were already paying at the cave. It gives us more space. Uh, we're going to be farming on that property. We're going to be using that property anyway. I understand um, that, that it's possible that this is unresolvable um, and that we won't be able to use this residentially. Um, I think at some point we have a problem with the Residential Land Use Act, the Institutionalized Persons Act, because we strongly believe that as a church, uh, we believe that churches lived out residentially, and that the church can go in any zoning district, and that there's an establishment clause problem when you define a church a certain way, and it has to act. Maybe we're wrong, maybe we're not. But um, what I was told by the Justice Department was, go through the process, ask for permission. If you get turned down, then the Justice Department would come and have a talk with whoever about whether or not our loop applies to this. I think what Commissioner Carlson did too is this. Before we jump into both B, I might want to check out the zoning to see if this could cost you a ton of money to make to be able to do what you want to do with one particular piece of ground. Whereas there may be a piece of ground over here which might be easier. That's, I, mean, yeah, that's I think that's the system. I don't, I don't know that we can find a piece of property that's going to be any easier anywhere else. I just, I think, I just want to make sure to clarify with Commissioner Carlson. No, sir. We don't have permission for that. And you keep referring to the farming. Well, there is dirt. It's not just rock uh, on the surface. There is uh, dirt on top. And uh, we're talking about uh, back to Eden gardening, which is no-till, above-ground compost type gardening, raised bed gardening. We've got a 100-foot by 80-foot uh, uh, greenhouse that was donated. We're talking about aquaponics uh, in the greenhouse. Uh, we'd like to do work. Uh, hey, guys, it's Doug. <sighs> Back in the truck, dear sweet Cindy. Um, uh, after the hearing, it was I don't know an hour or something. They asked me to talk. Man, there must have been 75 or 100 people there, and uh, the room only held 65. They had to have a bunch of people leave just to have the meeting. 50. And they want a bigger venue next time. They're asking for so they can bring more people. I didn't bring anybody of ours because I didn't want it to result in a shouting match or whatever. I think our folks have more control than the folks that were there generally, but not in all cases, but um, it was hard. The council was fine. They want the details. They want the facts and figures and whatever, and if engineers stamp stuff and say it's okay, fine, but uh, there's folks flipping out. I mean, dead set against it. Some of them just don't want church. I don't know what's going to be on the news tonight. They interviewed some of the people that are against it, and they were, I don't know, cheering and happy and whatever about... They were real mad not to get their say tonight. 
have to come back in a couple of months. Um, but uh, the council did right and the commission or whatever they are, um, board. Anyway, it's still hard um, uh, to be treated like you're the devil, um, that you're, I don't know what, the opposite of Santa Claus or something. You're like the Grinch and you're going to, some bunch of Vikings going to rape their cows and steal their chickens and kick their dogs or something. I don't know what they got in their heads. and um, Folks that may otherwise be perfectly normal, perfectly reasonable, and in some other circumstance would have been perfectly polite to us. But they catch that uh, internet gossip, slander, whatever nonsense bug, and uh, Satan jumps on them. And, um, you know, there's folks with legitimate concerns. The guy came up after, said, I live down the street. You addressed all the concerns. I think you were real, said it well. I think you presented well. I think you did what you were supposed to do, and I'm okay. And I just want to tell you, you know, you did all right. And I'm, I'm good. Okay, great, thanks. And he said, I think reasonable people would see that too. And I think he's right. And I'm counting on there being some reasonable people on the board and on the, on the uh, county council and whatever. But God really wants this, and I believe it's really going to happen, and uh, Satan really doesn't. And um, we're going to, you know, fight it out till whatever it takes. So... Uh, we did get an offer of support tonight. Um, maybe we'll have some legal representation that'll help push this through. Um, I'm um, anyway. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I know we're breaking ground. I know we're a forerunner. I know we're dealing with some fights um, that other folks are going to have to deal with down the road. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes when God tells you to build a refuge or whatever. Uh, he doesn't tell you to do it in Rutledge, Missouri, where there's no zoning, no rules, no whatever. He tells you to do it somewhere it's going to be a fight. So I'd rather do this in South Africa or, shoot, Vietnam or practically anywhere than here. Uh, but here we are. So God bless you all. Thanks for prayer. You know, got tabled for two months until we can get all the paperwork done. That takes a little pressure off, and we can get back to work on trying to get stuff built out there as far as the greenhouse and getting the cave operational fully and uh, we're doing all the studies done and doing what we need to do. We need to get it to, uh, to where it's sort of self-sufficient somehow. And um, uh, But we're going to start having church services out there, and that will bring more people and maybe calm some of the fears, and we'll see how it goes from there. That's all for now. Uh, God bless you all, and um, um, please keep praying for us. And if you got any extra laying around, and the Lord puts it on your heart, uh, we could use the help. Um, this is all costing money, and and um, fighting the man is not an inexpensive thing. Um, anyway, thank you all. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Amen.